On March 16, 2020, the police in Murray County, Georgia were called to a gruesome scene. Four fishermen in the area had come across a body that would later be confirmed to be that of Kenny Bunn. It was immediately obvious to the officers on the scene that foul play was involved. Kenny had been shot a total of four times, and judging by the lack of defensive wounds, it was clear that this was a cold-blooded execution-style murder that caught Kenny completely off guard. But despite the discovery of the body and the evidence of bullets lodged into his torso, finding a link to the killer proved to be much more difficult. The killer had taken a number of precautionary steps to ensure that their identity remained hidden and seemed that police would have a difficult time solving the case. But just as they thought they had hit a brick wall, the police came across some valuable CCTV footage of Kenny just hours before the murder. What seems like just a casual interaction between Kenny and an acquaintance would quickly turn out to be the missing piece of the puzzle. This is the heartbreaking case of Kenny Bunn. Kenny Bunn was born on June 14, 1992, in Murray County, Georgia. From a young age, he was known to be reserved and introspective. While other kids reveled in social gatherings, Kenny found solace in solitude, preferring his own company as opposed to spending time with friends. His odd demeanor and drawn-back nature were attributed to the abuse he suffered at the hands of his mother's ex-boyfriend, an experience that left him scarred both emotionally and mentally. The trauma inflicted upon him caused a lot of social anxiety in Kenny, leading to a world of depression and crippling self-worth. As Kenny grew older and developed into a young man, his struggles with fitting in didn't get any easier. He was a self-professed goth, who especially loved dark music and haunting poetry. But despite his odd demeanor and the curiosity that surrounded him, those who took the time to get to know him would often comment on how soft and loving he really was. Even though he portrayed an image of being unapproachable, the reality of the matter was that Kenny wanted nothing more than to fit in. The fact that he didn't know where he belonged or where he fitted in caused his depression to spiral even further, ultimately leading to suicidal thoughts and Kenny withdrawing himself even more. He spent most of his time in his room chatting with the few online friends he had, and he would also pass the time experimenting with drugs. However, by the time his mid-twenties came around, Kenny was sober and in the process of turning his life around. But then came that fateful day in March 2020. On March 16, 2020, at around 4.30 p.m., four young fishermen were casting their lines along the banks of Carlton Petty Road, when they unexpectedly stumbled upon an unresponsive person sprawled on the embankment of the Conasauga River. The person had blood coming from their nose, and by the time they got to him, it was clear that he was no longer alive. Yeah, I think we've run up on a dead body. You think we've run up on a dead body? Yeah, if you're on the trail, I think. There's a body laying in it. He's not responding. What, what should I do? Do you see his chest moving at all? No, there's blood. There's no pulse. He's like really tired. When police arrived on the scene, they were greeted with a horrific sight. Here they found the body of a male individual, estimated to be between the ages of 25 and 30. When police looked a bit closer, they discovered that he had been shot a total of four times. They also realized that the victim had no personal belongings on him and that they were unable to identify him. It was clear that the killer had attempted to cover their tracks to ensure that the police had a hard time solving the case. The motive behind the murder remained a mystery, and police weren't even sure if this was a planned assassination or if it was a robbery gone wrong. With no other leads to go by, detectives fanned out across the area, knocking on doors and stopping cars along the road, hoping to find potential witnesses. They encountered the full gamut of small-town eccentricities, but piecing together what happened or even who the victim was proved all the more difficult. Among the many dead ends, fragments of clues emerged. One woman recounted hearing faint gunshots the night before, while another neighbor made reference to a vagrant who was spotted roaming with a shopping cart. Police followed up on these leads, but once again, it led nowhere. News of the grim discovery quickly made its way around town and eventually made it to the ears of Kenny's grandmother. At this point, she hadn't seen Kenny for nearly two days 
and after hearing that a body was found on Carlton Petty Road, not too far from where Kenny's mother lived, she decided to call the police and report him missing. The detectives immediately made their way to Kenny's grandmother's house, and upon their arrival, it was almost immediately clear that Kenny was their victim. His grandmother described Kenny's clothing, the glasses he wore, as well as his distinctive shoulder tattoo, and it was clear that her every description aligned perfectly with the body found by the river. And when she finally showed them a picture of Kenny, all doubt was cast aside and the police were able to put a name to the victim, and their next step was trying to uncover what had happened and who was responsible. Police questioned Kenny's family on what they knew about his final moments. They confirmed that Kenny had left the house at 7.45 p.m. to go to a store not too far from his granny's house. Police then went to the store and requested to review the CCTV footage around the time that Kenny would have been there. Sure enough, they spotted him entering the store wearing the same clothes that he was wearing on the morning he was found. A couple of minutes after Kenny arrives at the store, a blue Honda CRV pulls up, and a lady approaches Kenny familiarly. She and Kenny are seen talking for a while before Kenny gets into the car with the girl, and they are seen leaving together. It seemed that this may have been the last person to see Kenny alive, so police set out to try to identify the unidentified woman in the video. When they showed the video to Kenny's family, they immediately recognized who the woman in the footage was. It was Kenny's ex-girlfriend, 20-year-old Nadia Swartz. The two had met in 2018, after starting an online relationship. He was immediately attracted to the quirky, dark-clothed girl he met on Facebook, who seemed to share his shadowy outlook on life. Kenny fell hard and fast, and he believed that he finally found his soulmate, someone who loved him for who he was, and someone who understood his complex nature. However, after just a few short months of dating, Nadia broke things off with Kenny. She grew impatient with his sensitivity and need for constant reassurance, and although they were officially broken up, Kenny still had hopes that they would get back together. The two had remained friends and would chat on regular occasions, giving Kenny false hope that things would work itself out. The truth of the matter, though, was that Nadia had moved on almost immediately after breaking things off with Kenny. She had started a relationship with 21-year-old Justin Hooker, yet her lingering communication fostered false hope in Kenny, and she seemed to enjoy the power trip of keeping him on the hook. Nadia was an interesting character for the police, and after learning that she lived nearby with her new boyfriend, Justin, they gave her a call and asked if she was willing to come around to answer some questions. Nadia immediately agreed, and she and Justin went over to the police to have a chat. Nadia admitted to police that she had met up with Kenny on the night he disappeared. She said that Kenny had asked her for a ride to a friend's place, and she happily agreed to help him out as she still considered him a friend. She said that on the way to the friend's house, she became aware that Kenny was actually on his way to buy weed. She said that an argument then broke out between them because she refused to take him to a drug dealer, and that's when Kenny got out of the car and walked away never to be seen again. Parts of Nadia's story were concerning to the police, and it raised a few red flags. Besides the fact that she was the last person known to see Kenny alive, the fact that she mentioned that he wanted to get weed was also concerning. Kenny had been off drugs since 2019 and was in the process of turning his life around, and those closest to Kenny were adamant that there was no way he would have relapsed, and they ruled out the theory that his death may have been related to a drug deal gone wrong. But with no physical evidence linking Nadia to the scene, police had no other option but to let her go, and it seemed that once again, they had hit a brick wall. A couple of days after interviewing Nadia and Justin, police unexpectedly received a call from a local attorney in the area, informing them that he had a client who wanted to share some information regarding the Kenny Bunn case. He told police that he had sold a small caliber handgun to his cousin Justin Hooker, just a day before Kenny got murdered. He told police that his cousin wanted a gun for self-protection, and initially, he had no concerns about selling the gun to his cousin, but as news spread about Kenny's murder, he became more suspicious. He said that he then called up Justin to confront him, and he eventually admitted that he and Nadia had killed Kenny. Police then arrested both Nadia and Justin, and took them in for questioning. They interviewed Justin first, who initially seemed to be cooperative, but as soon as he heard about the statement from his cousin about the gun sale, he closed up and requested a lawyer. Meanwhile, in another interrogation room, another set of officers were interviewing Nadia Swartz and she seemed to be more cooperative. 
She claimed that Kenny had been abusive towards her and threatened to kill her on multiple occasions. She said that she then told Justin about Kenny's abuse, and she and Justin then decided to confront Kenny on the night of his murder. She said that when she picked up Kenny at the gas station that evening, Justin was in the back seat of the car, and they all went down to the river to have a chat. Once at the river, an argument broke out and Kenny started attacking her and strangling her, and at that point Justin took out a gun and shot Kenny in order to protect her. Police then obtained a search warrant to photograph Nadia's body, and after confirming that she had no physical wounds on her, they determined that her story of abuse and an attack that night was highly unlikely. Kenny had no history of previous violence, and there was no evidence that a fight broke out that night. Nadia had no wounds on her, and neither did Kenny. Nadia Swartz and Justin Hooker were then both charged with the murder of Kenny Bunn. Prosecutors offered them a plea deal in exchange for information relating to the murder. They admitted that Kenny's murder had been premeditated. The motive for the murder was that Justin was jealous of the fact that Nadia and Kenny were still friends, and that they still got along. He gave Nadia an ultimatum that if they had to be together, then Kenny couldn't be in the picture. Nadia then came up with a plan to ambush Kenny and get him out of their lives once and for all. And that's how they ended up planning his murder. In March 2021, Nadia Swartz and Justin Hooker were sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years. <laughs>